Without a doubt, one of the very best GeForce GTX 1080 graphics cards I've reviewed so far is the Gamewood Phoenix GLH, which, for those wondering, is the same product as the Pallet GTX 1080 Game Rock Premium Edition. The Gamewood brand is owned by Pallet and has been since way back in 2005. This means those that didn't like the red, gold and black design of the Phoenix GLH have the option to purchase it in blue, grey and white as the Game Rock PE. Now for the arrival of the GTX 1060, we find a similar situation. Consumers have the choice of the Gamewood GTX 1060 Golden Sample or Palette GTX 1060 Jetstream. The Gamewood card sticks with the same colour scheme as its bigger 1080 brother, while the Palette GTX 1060 Jetstream features much more neutral colours. Palette has gone with a very cool looking silver and black theme and this should really suit just about any build. Like the Founders Edition, the Jetstream measures 250mm long, but while Nvidia's design stands 110mm tall, the Jetstream is 123mm tall, thanks to the oversized cooler. Speaking of which, the cooler has been constructed primarily from plastic, but does feature aluminium trimmings which have been painted silver. Moving air over the heatsink below are a pair of 90mm fans featuring Palette's new turbo fan blade design. These fans are extremely quiet, even when the card has been placed under load for an extended period. In total, there's 210mm by 73mm at 28mm thick worth of heatsink, improving efficiency of four 6mm copper heat pipes which connect to a large base plate that also covers the 6 GDDR5 memory chips as well as the VRMs. The PCB design has been changed, and now we find a 4 plus 1 power phase design, a slight upgrade over the Founders Edition. The PCB also stretches the full length of the card, so again we find the 6-pin PCIe power connector at the end of the graphics card. That being the case, no upgrades to the power input have been made, so there's nothing here that really suggests the Jetstream will overclock any better than the Founders Edition graphics card. Out of the box, the Palette GTX 1060 Super Jetstream does come with a factory overclock. The base clock has been set at 1620 MHz, which results in a boost clock of 1847 MHz. The memory base has been left at 2 GHz, resulting in the same data rate of 8 gigabits per second. That's an 8% core overclock and nothing on the memory. Around the back, we find a huge full-size backplate protecting the card, though the aluminium plate is pretty boring in terms of design. The I.O. configuration remains standard with a single dual-link DVI output, HDMI 2.0b and three display ports. When it came to overclocking the card, we were able to push the memory up to 2302MHz, while the core reached 1745MHz, resulting in a boost clock of 1973MHz. However, due to the way GPU Boost 3.0 technology works, the GTX 1060 Jetstream spent most of its time operating at about 2.1GHz, just like the Founders Edition. Again, we weren't able to increase the voltage, but the power target was maxed out at 119%. For a full list of the test system specs, please check the video description, and please note, only AMD and NVIDIA reference cards have been used. Alright, let's get into the benchmarks. First up, we've got everyone's favourite, Armour 3. Here the pallet card performed identically to the Founders Edition out of the box, and with our custom overclock applied, it was 2 FPS faster at 1440p. Next we've got our staple game benchmark in Battlefield 4, and again the results from the pallet card are very similar to that of the Founders Edition. This time it was 2 FPS faster out of the box, and again 2 FPS faster with our custom OC applied. Far Cry Primal showed very similar results again, with the Jetstream managing to get a single frame over the factory clock Founders Edition, and again 2 FPS higher once both cards were overclocked. Okay, so you're starting to get the picture. In Just Cause 3, Palette's card was a single frame faster. And here in Star Wars Battlefront, it was identical out of the box and two frames faster when overclocked. And finally in The Division, it was again just a single frame faster at the stock clocks and two frames faster when overclocked. This Palette card managed to scrape in these very few extra frames over the 1060 Founders Edition whilst consuming an additional 10 watts of power on average, so there was a slight trade off there. We often see board partner cards using more than Nvidia's reference cards, so no real surprises here. I'd perhaps expected better cooling than we saw here from the partner card, but that's compared to Nvidia's Founders Edition, which honestly seems to have a really good quality cooler on board that's already doing a great job. At an almost dead silent 1000 RPM, the Jetstream did let the 1060 GPU reach 70 degrees which is quite a bit hotter than the 64 degrees of the Founders Edition card. However, if I manually increased the fan speed to 1400 RPM, the card was just audible and dropped down to just 62 degrees. Using the automatic fan profile with our custom overclock applied, the temps rose to 73 degrees. Palette is clearly focused on operating volume rather than operating temperatures, so with the Super Jet Stream and with the temps well below 80 degrees, it makes sense. As I wrap up this review, I'm reminded of my first GTX 1080 review based on the Gigabyte G1 Gaming. 
I walked away from that review pretty disappointed with the card's performance and overclocking headroom. However, after testing numerous other GTX 1080 graphics cards, it quickly became clear that the G1 Gaming was getting the most out of Nvidia's new Pascal GPU. I suspect the same will be true for the GTX 1060 and Palette Super Jetstream. For the most part, the Palette card was just 1-2 to two FPS faster in its out-of-the-box configuration. Then when comparing the maximum stable overclocked performance of both cards, the Jetstream again came out on top by just 1-2 to two FPS. Unfortunately, it did run slightly hotter and consume slightly more power too. The good news though was the operating volume, which was near silent. Even with the fan forced to spin at 1400 RPM, the card was very cool and we quickly saw the load temperature drop to just 62 degrees. Of course, the real victory here should be the price, and I'm expecting the GTX 1060 Super Jetstream to cost around $250. I wouldn't imagine Palette would charge more than a $10 to $20 premium for this model. It'll be interesting to see if Palette or any other board partner comes up with a more crazy 1060 design, one that increases power phase design further and includes not one but two PCIe power connectors. Still, given the 1060 is meant to be a cost-effective mid-range product and is already under pressure from AMD's RX 480, it's unlikely we'll see many extreme versions of the 1060. Overall, I really like the Palette GTX 1060 Super Jetstream. The dual fans are nice and quiet, the design looks great, and the inclusion of a full-size backplate was a welcomed addition. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host, Matt, as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.